Hello and welcome back. So we're looking here at IFRS standards and we're looking in this session at IAS 36, which is impairment. And we are continuing our theme of thinking. We don't need to know absolutely everything about the standard, but we need to know the key areas. And we've made it really simple and said, can we know all of the key areas in a tweet? 140 characters or less. So here's our tweet for impairment. We'll have an impairment if the carrying amount of something in the financial statements is greater than the recoverable amount. So that's the first thing we need to know. We need to know that the recoverable amount is the higher of the value in use and the fair value less costs. And then we need to know that if there is an impairment, we first of all write off the damaged asset, then goodwill, and then other assets, if the impairment comes to an amount greater than each of those as we go along. So those are the key bits. If you know this, you should pass a question on IAS 36. But let's break it down just a little bit more, just to talk about each of these in a little bit more detail and to say how you would need to deal with them in the exam. So the first part is there's an impairment if the carrying amount is greater than the recoverable amount. So carrying amount, first of all, well, look, that's easy because the carrying amount is simply the amount in the financial statements. So you'll need to think, is it in there at cost or maybe is it in there at a revalued amount? However it is in there, you may well need to do the calculation. You may well have to work out the cost less depreciation or the revalued amount less depreciation in order to get the carrying amount. But that's easy. We know how to do that. The second part is the recoverable amount. So we need to compare the carrying amount, which is just what it's in our financial statements at, to the recoverable amount. And the recoverable amount is, and the first thing to be sure of is that we know it is the higher of, so we need to be sure that this bit is important, higher of, and it's the higher of the value in use. Now, how do we get the value in use? Well, the value in use is simply the present value of the future cash flows. So you work out what that asset is going to earn you and you discount it to today's value and that gives you the value in use. Now we need to compare that to the fair value less costs. That's usually given to you. It's usually fairly easy to get the fair value less costs, but we're thinking about things like solicitors, fees, that sort of thing. So we compare the carrying amount, the amount it's in the financial statements at, to the recoverable amount. We need to know that the recoverable amount is the higher of the value in use and the fair value less costs. And if you want to think about why that is, well, you've got an asset, what are you going to do with it? You're either going to use it or you're going to sell it. Which of those will you do? You'll do the one that gives you the most. There you go, the higher of. You'll do the one that's best for the business, either using it to get the cash flows or selling it to get the money from the sale. So let's say that our carrying amount is greater than our recoverable amount. Well, then our asset is impaired. Now, if it's just one asset, that's fine. We write it down to the impaired amount, but on occasion, you may be told or you may have to use what's called a cash generating unit. And a cash generating unit is the smallest number of assets you can put together in order to get cash flow because sometimes you have an asset and it doesn't actually generate cash itself. So in order to do the value in use calculation, so it's really all about that, it's 
really all about this value and use calculation. In order to get the present value of future cash flows, you may have to use what's called a cash generating unit. The smallest number of assets you can put together in order to generate cash. If so, there will be several assets that could be impaired. So how do we know which ones we allocate the impairment to? Well, this is the order we do it in here. So we first of all write off the damaged asset. So that's number one, damaged asset first. We then write off any goodwill. We then allocate it to the other assets and you do that on a pro rata basis. So based on their current value, you write them off pro rata. So the entries would be basically debit the P&L and then credit those items in the order that we have just seen. Number one, the damaged asset. Number two, goodwill. Number three, the other assets pro rata. Okay, so that's the only little technical bit I want to look at in this one because the cash generating unit you need to be aware of it. It's because a single asset on its own may not generate cash flows. We therefore couldn't do an impairment test. We need to put together assets until we get enough to generate cash. That's called a cash generating unit. You then do the test. And if there is an impairment, you write off those assets in the order of damaged asset first, then goodwill, then the other assets. So that's our summary of the basics of IAS 36. Make sure you know all of this. This is core stuff. This is the stuff that will pass you in the exam. So make sure you know and understand it.